Hello everybody, this is Joe Hooker 11 bringing you another battle of the American Revolution. Uh, today we are journeying to New York in the Battle of Bemis Heights, which occurred on October 7. And this is part of the uh, 1777, and this is part of the uh, Saratoga campaign. Now, it is kind of uh, put under the umbrella of the Battle of Saratoga, However, the Battle of Saratoga was technically two battles, both in breakout attempts by General Lord Burgoyne. Now, actually, I played this battle a couple days back. Um, what I was going to try to do with it was I was going to try to, to save the uh, recording of the battle, go back through there, and kind of uh, film the battle more uh, um, to record the battle again. But this time, without uh, playing as I was uh, talking, I'd be able to get uh, more information out like I was wanting to do. However, I completely forgot to do that, so... But I do still have the recording from the actual gameplay, so here we go. Now, as you can see, we are playing as the British troops during this battle under Lord Burgoyne. And my first... Uh, my strategy here is to create a... Kind of a three lines. Um, the first one is going to be skirmishers, then there's going to be the heavier infantry behind that, and then we're going to set up guns behind this major hill you see right here at the forefront of the video. And Lord Burgoyne at this battle only had about 6,000 troops roughly. Um, he had lost a lot of troops during the uh, Battle of Fraser's Farm, uh, Freeman's Farm. Fraser's farm wouldn't happen until the American Civil War. And he's like, okay, we're going to try to break out of the Americans here at Saratoga. What can we do? And so they launched a second attack. At this battle, he was outnumbered two to one. The Americans had 12,000 men under Horatio Gates. And Benedict Arnold was very influential in causing the American victory. Here we go, lining up all our troops over here, and moving our skirmishers forward. And in fact, he's one of the few generals, but his Darnold is, that he has his leg as a monument on the battlefield, a body part, but his name actually isn't on the monument. It's really weird. But I think that's only from his uh, Freeman Farm um, battle. But as you can see, we're getting the artillery up on that hill, and I'm actually really surprised with how fast in this battle that it got up there. But as you can see, um, we've got uh, units kind of scattered out front on the flanks. Um, one of the, my units, a Hessian guard unit, is actually in reserve, and this would actually kind of play a more deciding role in the battle than I would think. Now, as always, um, me being the victor in the battle was not so much a factor as in if I won and could change like the timeline, that'd be awesome, but it wasn't going to affect the overall gameplay because of the fact that they lost this battle, being number two, I'll number two to one. Now we're getting close to the actual first contact, and you can see that I'm moving my troops forward. Why am I moving it forward when I have a good offensive line there? Here we go, first volleys. And the reason why I moved them forward was because of the fact that, like right here, I'm moving my troops because it'd be more advantageous to move them further up so that way they could fire into the enemy as they were approaching. Because that uh, ridge right there that uh, they were behind was going to stop a lot of the bullets. And that's why I moved my troops forward from there. And also because of the fact that Artillery pieces in the game would like to uh, hit their own men. There you go, the Americans firing their first flies back, and this uh, unit almost wavers. Well, it is wavering. White flashy flag means that they're wavering. As anybody who's played this game knows. Now, um, the problem with uh, having skirmishers out like I have them is the fact that they're really easy to over to flank kind of like with the, this one that turning because the Americans are flanking them and there's actually more American units on the other side that can flank them 
But my main purpose with having the skirmishers is to weaken the American lines for when I actually do face off against them. And the, the problem with the artillery in this battle is that uh, they're hitting a lot. They're actually hitting the cliffs of the nearby hills. Not very good. Um, the, the skirmisher units are still uh, holding their own. That one's about to be flanked. As you can see, the Americans are rolling around them. And I'm... At this point in the battle, uh, as you can see, I'm actually moving forward some. Gonna move forward that unit, uh, that one I'm highlighting right now, so that way I can actually get a good number of volleys in. But you can see that these Americans just outnumber my own troops by quite a bit. But, we shall see just how well this uh, defensive. This defense and death strategy is going to work out. So I'm going to pull back my rangers from over there from this uh, combat. I forgot to put them in skirmisher mode, my rangers, at that point in time. So instead of running back, firing, running back, firing back, they forgot to do that. Um, moving my grenadiers forward, I'm going to try to hit them with uh, grenades. Are we going to, to go work? Run through the boys! Here we go, throwing grenades. And look at that, the Americans actually move forward before they go up. And they didn't kill anybody, which is pretty sad. I like I really like grenades in this game. You've got firing all down the line line now. The Americans are going to charge that position. Here we go. Most multiplayer games, they actually don't allow you to have artillery in the game, uh, just because of the fact that, well, artillery is very accurate in Empire Total War. It really is. So, like, no, you can't have any, which is fine. I mean, I actually like having more infantry anyways, just because of the fact it takes so long for artillery to form up where they're supposed to be. There we go. Moving forward, my... Uh, Reserve uh, guard unit, grenadier unit, I should say. Gonna reform and gonna support to that center. And as you can see, the the Americans are massing lots of units on individual British units. And due to the fact that the Americans have more troops, and they actually have a lot more experience. Well, not a lot more experience, they've only won like one or two battles to, before this to point in time of Saratoga campaign. So they've got a bit more uh, up behind them. There, you can see several points um, that American troops are wavering. They will rally and return to the battle, even if they rout. But yeah, you can see that some units were wavering. My troops really kind of, uh, they did very well this battle, holding their own. Look at all those American units up on that ridge, they're all just huddled together. If my artillery had been better, I could have done a lot more to them. But I didn't. There we go, those guys are still holding their own, bringing up those grenadiers, and unfortunately, they're not going to do very well on that, that hilltop because of the fact that the American troops, I will real come to realize, they actually don't have the range on them. Oh, yep, and that line is wavering. Um, one thing I've noticed with my battles is that the center is almost always breaks first. It's really weird. It always has the most problems. And I I don't know why that is. <laughs> but moving up my uh, grenadiers to lengthen my own lines to 
on my left. And the way that you uh, can tell the left and the right in uh, battles is wherever you're standing, you hold your hands up, and obviously your right flank is uh, da da da, is your right flank, and left is the other one. And you can get kind of uh, confused when you're watching like Civil War movies. Oh, look at those units that breaking. They talk about the, the flanks. Oh, their left flank is in the air, their right flank, going after the right flank. When actually, uh, when you look at it, it's like left hand. No, you have to reverse it. Uh, the battle is continuing going, and my entire center right there broke. So, all I've got is my master artillery batteries. And the Continental Army is flanking my units. Now, one thing that a lot of, it's a misconception among American uh, novices is we think that the Continental Army only referred to those troops under George Washington. In fact, the Continental Army was any regular units that the Americans uh, had. Now like that, I refused my flank over there, facing off against multiple units, and forward with the charge, which broke automatically. So, yeah, even though these troops were not directly under George Washington's command, the Continental Army was, if they were regulars, they were Continentals. And in fact, George Washington actually commanded all forces in North America, not just the main army. Another kind of misconception that Americans have. And that unit rallied, sent them back in, reformed them up to protect my guns because guns are very important. The, the sad thing about uh, this whole battle of Saratoga is had General Howe actually gone to New York like he was supposed to and joined the assault, they could have split the American colonies in half. They go, charge, no, and my men weren't able to reload fast enough. But they had this, uh, the plan that Burgoyne had came up with was that their, that his army and Howe's army would meet up in New York City, splitting the American colonies at two. But Howe's like, no, I was like, yeah, sure, I'll go along with it. And then he's like, no, actually, I'm going after Philadelphia. And because of that, France ended up joining the war on the side of the Americans. My American, my General Burgoyne charged the back of the, the American infantry and they're wavering and breaking London. I'm down to two artillery pieces on um, some grenadiers uh, and light infantry. And General Burgoyne has been killed. Probably really good for him because had he lived, it would have been very good for him. Actually, in the British Army, if, even if you lost, you actually got a lot of good stuff. Like General. Uh, Cornwallis became the British governor of India. And my Hessians are in combat now, and the battle is basically wrapped up. There's not much left that can be done for my troops. My, break atta my breakout attempt failed, and I'm gonna go down in history as the general who lost the Saratoga campaign and allowed the French to get into the war on the Americans. Anyways, this is a good battle. Um, like, comment, subscribe, and we shall talk to you guys all later during our season finale of the American Revolution alternate war battles. See you guys later.